Hallelujah. No, we'll get it right in we the second time. best kept secret. Let us bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you. Father, we give you praise. Almighty and ever-living we God, we, we worship you. Father, we bless you because you are God. We, we praise you because you are God. You are God and there is no other. You are the Father of all spirits and you are the God of all flesh. You command the armies of heaven and there is none that compares with you. You are stronger. You are mighty. You are powerful. And that is why, Father, it is to you and to you alone that we bring our praise and our worship. It is only you that we magnify. It is only you that we exalt. It is only you that we praise because only you are God. So, Father, we commit our service this morning into your hands. We ask that, Father, you will lead us by your spirit and you will bring us, Father, to that point where indeed we will have an understanding of that which is your will concerning us to the praise and glory of your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The, 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 the audiovisual had a really nice in intro, but uh, we had some technical issues, and we'll, we'll, we'll do the intro another time. But this morning is not about the, the intro, amen? I believe that the Lord has a word for somebody here. If you're that person, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you came in here this morning expecting the Lord to speak to you, I want you to lift up your voice and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you came in here this morning expectant, I want to assure you, the Bible says that the expectation of the righteous will not be disappointed. So lift up your voice this morning and shout hallelujah. Amen. I am preaching a sermon this morning that we have, we have entitled Before Men in Black. Turn to your neighbor and say, Before Men in Black. You know, Men in Black is a, is a movie that I, I know, you know, I think they're on, the third, they're on the third part now. It's a movie that I, I think many of us have seen. How many of us have seen the movie? Well, most of us have seen the movie, except the folks on this side. The guys on this side are holy. Amen. <laughs> they, don't, they, don't, they don't watch movies. Amen. Men in Black is a movie about an organization that has been tasked with the, with the assignment or the job of, uh, of keeping the earth neutral in, in the wars between the, between the galaxies. You know, they have the job of, of monitoring the aliens and keeping out the undesirable elements among them. They call them the scum of the universe. Amen? And all the members of the organization wear a very distinct uniform. They wear, you know, black suits and white shirts and, and, and black ties and and dark shades, you know, like the stereotypical FBI uniform. And they carry these, uh, these, these gadgets, these weapons that are very effective in killing uh, rogue aliens. And then they have this other thing that they do that if you ever see an alien, they, they make you forget. But before there were men in black, before that organization, God himself had already put in place an organization that would effectively limit and destroy the works of those whom I call spiritual scum. Amen? And that organization is the church. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are that organization. You see, many folks, many people don't realize the importance of the purpose of the church. Too many of us think that church is just the place where we go to, you know, listen to good music. And by the way, the music today was great. Let's give the choir a round of applause. You know, many people think church is a place where you go and listen to great music, where you go and get some inspiration when you are down, where you go and find solutions to your problems. But you see, it is important that we understand what God's intention for the church is. The Bible in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10 says, His intent was that now through the church, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Bible says, for this reason was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The reason why the church exists today is to destroy the works, it is to destroy the manifestations of the devil on earth. Before there were men in black, there was you. You, 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 you. You are God's agent J. Triple X, 007, whatever. 
Amen? You are God's agent. You are God's vehicle. You are the manifestation of God's power to regulate and destroy the works of the enemy. God has given you the authority to enforce his will here on earth. When God made Adam, God said to Adam, Adam, I, I authorize you. I empower you to be fruitful, to multiply, to have dominion, and to rule over the earth. You are authorized. Don't you remember say you are authorized? To enforce the will of God on this earth. When Jesus Christ taught his disciples to pray, he said, when you pray, your prayer should be, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You are authorized to bring his will from heaven down to the earth. But not just in a, in a geographical sense or in a general sense, but you are authorized to bring his will to bear in your life. You didn't hear me. I said you are authorized. You have the authority to enforce and make God's will happen in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning we're going to talk a little bit about our authority as believers. About our, our authority as God's agent. And once you can grasp the authority that you have, you know how people say, well, under the circumstances, you will stop living under the circumstances and start living above the circumstances. You will no longer be the tail, you will start to be the head. You will no longer be beneath, you will start to be above. Of whatever circumstance and situation the enemy may throw at you. The Bible says, and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. It is the truth that you know that you have knowledge of, that you believe, that you accept, that you embrace, that shall make you free. The truth will free you from your, from your current circumstances and release you into the promised land. You know, people hear that scripture many times, and they think that, oh, and you will hear the truth, and the truth will make you free. And they're thinking, well, I don't have any demons. I have no need of being free. I am not captive. I have no need of being free. But you are captive to any circumstance that you do not like and want to move out of. So the truth will make you free, not only from demonic attacks. The truth will free you from stagnation and move you into promotion. The truth will free you from the bondage of poverty and move you into the freedom of abundance. The truth will free you from the bondage of depression and move you into the freedom of joy. It is the truth that will free you from the bondage of fear and anxiety and move you into the freedom of faith and peace. The truth, listen, will free you from where you are. Amen? It will free you from where you are and move you from into where you want to be. That is why the Bible says, and you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Hallelujah. Anybody here want to know the truth? Is there anybody here who wants to know the truth? If you want to know the truth, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I said, if you want to know the truth, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, last year, uh, about July last year, I preached a sermon about, about authority. And uh, I wore a uniform. How many people remember that sermon? Yeah. Hallelujah. I wore a uniform to, to demonstrate. But this morning, I want to talk a little bit deeper about authority. Let's turn to Matthew 28. Verse 18. The truth is going to make somebody free here. There's somebody here. I want to share a truth with you. The Bible says, God sets the solid truth in families. But the rebellious dwell in parched places. There's somebody who is asking God, how long? How long will I be alone? The Lord said, I should tell you, when you stop being rebellious, when you stop rebelling against him, he will set you in the family that you desire. The truth just set somebody free here. Jesus came to them, in verse 18 of Matthew 28, and he said to them, all authority in heaven 
and on earth has been given to me. There's somebody here, the truth that will make you free is that you need to open your hands. It says the hand that is closed cannot get anything. You need to open your hands. You're caught in a vicious cycle. You don't give because you don't have, and because you don't give, you're not going to have. Somebody has just been set free. It says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. There's somebody here, you're going through a very difficult time. Very anxious. You're very concerned. The Lord says, if you will trust him to live your life through you, if you will trust him to order your steps, if you will stop depending on your own minuscule intelligence, and I use the word minuscule because that is the word the Holy Spirit uses. You think you know, but you don't know diddly. Talk to your neighbor and say, you don't know squat. Say, if you are the person the Holy Spirit is talking to, you don't know squat. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will order your steps into your promised land. So the thing that you are not sleeping about, you will not fix it by not sleeping. There's nothing on the internet that will solve it. The only solution is that you do the will of God. Someone else was just set free here. Verse 19, sorry, verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, turn to your neighbor and say, Surely. It says, And surely I am with you always to the very end of of the age. Your wife is not going to submit to you except you love her. There's somebody here, the truth you need to hear this morning, the truth you need to hear this morning is that your wife will not submit to you unless she has the confidence that you have her best interests at heart. She didn't marry you to be her lord and master. She married you to be your partner and to help you. Someone else was just set free. Man, isn't this a good day? If you love the Lord, shout hallelujah. God has given to Christ all the authority in heaven and earth. All the authority God has given to Christ. That is why He can raise the dead. That is why he can cast out demons. That is why he has power over the elements. There is nothing that he does not have authority over. That is why there is no circumstance or situation that he cannot intervene in and change. Because he has authority, death has to obey him. Because he has authority, the the storms on on the sea, on the river have to be quiet when he says be quiet. Because he has authority, when he speaks to demons, they become suicidal. Because he has authority, there is no sickness or disease that does not bow at his presence. And through Christ, you and I have that same authority. Now, we get it in two separate ways. Luke chapter 9 verse 1. Let's turn our Bibles there. We get it first of all because Christ directly delegated that authority to us. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. He says, Then he called his 12 disciples together, and he gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure all diseases. And he 